hello welcome to my show ladies and gentlemen this is your fellow nigerian today it's a little bit sunny here looking out from the window and i think uh, your city is now doing bad also um where today i want to talk about something uh that i have done you know years back okay i've talked about this before okay probably not in this very profile but there are other profiles that I have out there in the past actually closing down, but I still uh, kept those messages. You know, what I want to do this today or why I would like to revisit uh, that very message is to actually update that message with the situation that we have today with uh, Mr. Donald Trump, uh, the present uh, American president. And in that message, I actually talk about, you know, how those who are rich are not necessarily the uh the intelligent ones in other words if you are rich doesn't mean that you are smarter than your friends or your family members who are not rich i talked about this before because in everything in life there is always a desire the Bible talk about how the Greek seek after wisdom. The, the Jews seek after science. So the only desire of a fool is centered on money, 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 money. Don't get me wrong, but I'm going to prove this to you. But intellectuals actually seek after our knowledge. They seek after wisdom. They, they, they study every day. That is why when you look around, the people, the individuals who are actually responsible for whatever you have today around you, whether great nations that are functioning where, I'm not talking about Nigeria. I'm not talking about those countries that are full of conflicts where their intellectuals has almost you know completely obliterated from their societies so the impact of their lack of intellectualism in nation building is what you have today in nigeria chaos not just in nigeria but africa as a whole because every time I'm doing my program here, I always like to talk about Nigeria because that is the purpose of this profile. But because of what is going on today with Donald Trump, why you see a man that ought to have been commanding respect, but right now he has not that respect at all. Kids in the street want to store him. He can't come out now very well without, you know, heavy security around him. I mean, when you arrive in the U.S., you arrive in New York, you go to Las Vegas, the same thing. Even around the world right now, you go to Dubai, you go to somewhere in Philippines, uh, you know, Macau, you see the name Trump. Even though sometimes he is not the direct owner of those properties. But they are using his names, paying him for that, because that name has been recognized as a very powerful name in the arenas of international business in terms of hotel and casino and estate development. So when this man was striving within this casino uh, business and, of course, uh, estate building, he has respect there. Those people around him has respect for him there. But the moment he walked out of that, you know, that very direction, that domain of estate development, a casino, then he has a problem. And this substantiated what I have said before. Well, I said that fools are driven by money. And by money alone. And the intellectuals are driven by wisdom, knowledge. That is their motive. That is why they are alive. Knowledge. And I talk about in that message how you will know if a man is a fool or not. 
for you to know that these rich people, a lot of them, for you to know whether they are fools, you need to invite them in the councils of the wise, in the councils of the intellectuals. And you will see how they will behave. You will see what they will have to say. I'm not talking about people like Bigate. Bigate is an intellectual. I mean, imagine inviting somebody, if he was here alive, somebody called Abiola of Nigeria or Igbinadion. You know, Igbinadion was the richest man in Nigeria back in the, in the, in the, was it in, in the, in the eighties, uh, early nineties. And of course, after you have Abiola, you know, who wanted to be the Nigerian president, you know, that is what you have in Nigeria, fools running Nigeria. But what am I saying now? Looking at these two men, imagine inviting these two men, even ambassador, in the midst of the intellectual, where intellectual discussion is ongoing, where there are exchange of intellectual, uh, you know, uh, discourse. You are going to see how they are going to make fool of themselves. But these are rich people. Okay? So, majorities of the people you see around the world that are very rich. I'm not talking about those who develop products like people like, uh, you know, Bigate or uh, the math who owes Apple. Those are intellectuals. Remember, their products came into existence through intellectual development. That is why their products are called intellectual properties. I'm not talking about those people. I'm not talking about the man that owes Samsung or whatever. Those are intellectuals. But what I'm talking about is people who became rich overnight. Who make their money through estate development, casino, through transportation, through all, the, all of that sort of business, through all year. You have a lot of millionaires right now in Nigeria who made money through oil, through, you know, the crude oil business that's going on in Nigeria. Imagine inviting one of them in the midst of the intellectuals. And you are going to see how disgraceful they are going to act. So what I'm trying to tell you here today is that whatever that is going on right now with Donald Trump, you see, a lot of people would like to attribute his lack of, uh, you know, uh, control in terms of, you know, the right language to use. His lack of, you know, uh, you know sense of intelligence in his speeches. I mean, there's no single trait of intellectual in this man. Some people would like to attribute all of that. To the fact that he wasn't raised as a politician, so, you know, like what they usually say right now, politically correct, that his lack of political correctness, you know, is due to the fact that this man wasn't raised in the arena of politics, where you have a lot of, you know, intelligent individuals. I'm not talking about Nigeria, I'm talking about the United States of America, because what you have today in Nigeria, in the Nigerian politics, those are the least intelligent Nigerians running the country. And that is why you see there's nothing going on there. And majority of them are from the majority tribes. So I'm not talking about, I'm talking about United States of America. Where Donald Trump today, the supposed great man who has tattooed his name on one of the biggest buildings around the world. I mean, you arrive in the Big Apple, New York. You see that name there. His name is almost synonymous with Empire State Building. You know? But such a man has no respect today. Is it because of what he has said concerning the disabled and the Arab? No, not really. But because of his general you know uh you know presentation he has nothing to offer you see when a man speaks that is the moment you will know who the man is what is coming out of him 
are his ways ways of wisdom or they are just you know garbages donald trump is an educated man like uh, what i hear he, he's been to university he has degree his father was already a millionaire i'm going to inherit a lot of money and that's who i am going to be another rich man just like my father he was mesmerized by that money you see there are that group of people where they never had it before their parents never had it nothing but they were driven by you know that uh you know ambition to be a rich person probably you know go by the side they became rich but does it mean that they are more intelligent and that is what we must understand because when these people are invited to the councils of the wise they fail and their money wouldn't help them nobody will see their money anymore what people will see is stupidity and foolishness and that is what people are seeing right now in this man mr donald trump the american president you see i talk about how when you have a child and you gave this child some tax you know to do or some puzzle to arrange and this child is not able to concentrate to solve that puzzles you know that child is going to have a problem he might be very rich later but he's going to have a problem like what you have today with donald trump i also talk about how you know a fool cannot concentrate a fool is only driven by immediate reward. It's not driven by long-term reward. Take for instance, and uh, you see uh, Mr. Sugarbeck, the man that owns Facebook now. And I, I know when he was in the university or whatever the type of institution that he went to, of course, I knew that he dropped that uh, later when he acquired all that he needed to actually set up facebook of course he had worked with other guys but this guy was somebody who was down to act he was with this brown t-shirt similar one he's still wearing today he was actually in nigeria the other day now people were surprised what i want to point out here is that this guy was walking he was not looking at the immediate reward but there were other students who were driven by you know immediate you know payment they, they, they probably drop out they don't really know why they dropped out they dropped out because they want to go and work in the mcdonald's and uh over what over some pays where they have to rent the car and go to the club and and suddenly the street with girls that is the immediate reward of a fool that is his desire. Don't get me wrong. He could become very rich, but he's still a fool. But a man driven by long-term reward, the humble man, the man of understanding, the man that seek wisdom and knowledge, like the man that old Facebook I point out, he dropped out because he have acquired what he wanted. Even so, he was very humble. He was not talking about riding big car. He was not talking about he want to, uh, you know, wear suit and big, big resources and uh, expensive stuff. He was looking ahead of time, looking ahead of his peers. So now, when you see how his uh, long-term work has paid off, I mean, this man was billions now. Your nation needs to be built on a solid foundation. That is why when I see people, everybody just want to build us. I, I would like to talk about this in my next message. You know, I, I hope you stay tuned. The traffic of life you have in Nigeria, where everybody are traveling in the same direction, the same desire, the same want. Therefore, build up that traffic what am i saying is that 
you have others who have that desire to be rich, but they never get rich. They could work overnight. That is another fool. But a man of understanding, a man who understands the, the capacity of intellectualism in nation building, will seek for that. Remember, America, take for instance, was built by intellectuals. The foundation need to be laid, like what I try to point out to you. You can't build a house on the sand. When there are no intellectuals to lay the foundation for you to set up your companies, for even the fool to strive and become uh, uh, millionaires, you know? So it's like everybody are just building those things on the sand that is going to sink. Those things will sink. In terms of intellectual discourse, where people come together and discuss where to move their nation to, which direction to take their nation to. For example, when, uh, the man from Singapore, the great builder, Mr. Jew, he's an intellectual. You cannot build a nation when you are not an intellectual. So, such people lay foundation. They know the direction to take their nation to. They lay that foundation for even the fool to become rich. If everybody are just after money and there's no people doing the hard thinking as to how to build this country, because you can't just set up a company in, you know, on top of a sand, it will sink. You can't set up your company in an environment where, you know, there are murder and killing and kidnappings and evil going on. People can't even go to the office. So when you have that, because of lack of intellectual participation in the development of that nation, what you're going to have is chaos. Just what you have today in Nigeria. But... Great nations, when you go to Japan, you know what I'm talking about. You come to Germany, France, these are great countries. The foundation of these countries were laid by their intellectuals, philosophers, men that were driven by that, that, that kind of spirit to build a great country for themselves and for their kids and kids to come. If you don't have them, you go nowhere. So the problem today with Donald Trump is that he's a fool, even though he's a billionaire. Because he's coming out from that closet, from that domain where he could have done anything, even the money was to be coming. Do you know? He's coming out from there, exposes this man and show the world that he's a fool. So this is what I want to talk about because every time you see uh, rich people, it doesn't really mean that they are very intelligent. It doesn't mean that they are smarter than you. Because the countries where they became now billionaires, the foundation of these countries are all laid by their intellectuals. They built that foundation for them, these rich people, to succeed. Even though some of them are fools. When you look around your countries, as you are listening to this message, you will agree with me. There are some of your rich men and women, some of those billionaires, who suddenly disgrace themselves. You know, in case they are invited in the councils of the intellectuals, in the councils of the wise men. So... Thanks for listening. This is what I want to talk about. And uh, stay tuned. Like I said... If you're a Nigerian, I'm going to be dealing with a special topic, the traffic of life in Nigeria, where everybody's desire there is about money, house, and car. So they are traveling through one road, and there's a traffic hold up there that is causing problems. Uh, once again, thank you, and God bless you.